14 podcast and the Toronto Blue Jays have finally played games at the Rogers Center. How would you grade that uh that home the homestand so far, Avery? B? Yeah, today was a little disappointing when you have them on the ropes for a sweep. Um there's nothing like finally winning a series and then being disappointed by it uh because you lose the last game of the series and then you go into yes. the off day on a loss into extra innings. That's just baseball. Sadly feels good to win a series feels really good to have starting pitching back on track. Uh, Barrios didn't need to get back on track, but uh, everyone else, not a good start. Bassett probably was the main one there uh, waiting for because Kikuchi had been decent in his starts as well. Uh, all in all, I'll take, the, I'll take that home stand. Needed it. Needed it really bad. Yeah, and and it puts you it puts them in a good spot now. I mean, uh, they were two games below five hundred going into this homestand. Now they're one game below five hundred. They won a series against the Rockies this weekend. They're back to five hundred uh, with the Yankees coming to town, which is not bad after a pretty tough schedule and some very bad hitting by the Toronto Blue Jays. So uh, it's definitely putting them in a good in a good spot. I definitely have a different change of tone compared to what we had when we were talk we talked to the people on Sunday night. Uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, uh, the main thing we can kind of talk about is we weren't there uh, inside totally, but we got to see some of it, what people thought of the renovations. Yeah, I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard some people, I asked actually our guy, Ernie's, I asked his girlfriend, uh, I was like, What's, what, what are the renovations like? Shout out, Steph. And she was like, uh, it kind of looks like, I guess to her experience, it's kind of the exact same thing, really. She's not really paying attention to fan experience, you know? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, she said it was really nice. Uh, but it's not like a crazy, like, this is a brand new stadium type of thing. I guess we'll have to decide for ourselves on uh, Jock Night Friday. That's the best way to way, way to put it. Well, we do, we do have one thing. We got to see the backstop on TV. Again, we'll make a lot of people angry. Um, I just did the side by side picture because I knew people would care about it. To me, at first, I was like, Oh, we're a little off center more than normal. They made the green of the TD ad in the first inning of game one the greenest green there'd ever been. Yeah, that was bad of <laughs> all was time. Bad. And it was like, Okay, things are gonna need to change if that. And then they did uh, inning one of game two where they they chilled on the green a little bit. I, I don't know if that was on purpose or they changed something, but it was way too green to start. Uh, I think it looks kind of cool. The brick backstop uh, yeah. looks more, more like a it's traditional. A, it's going to be an adjustment, man. The camera angle, uh, all of it. It's going to be a massive adjustment for guys like us and all the fans who've been watching this team for a thousand fucking years, right? Like, but um, like by, by the end of game three today, it, it wasn't even, I didn't think it was odd at all anymore. Yeah, that's fair. I, it, it's it's there's people who are going to just look for something to complain about no matter what it could be the greatest built stadium on the face of the earth and there'll be there'll be complaints about it i'm nothing burger about it like i don't care i care about the product on the field <laughs> i mean i'm not a business guy where it's like oh this is going to be massive here uh i do think the addition of the luxury seating quote unquote kind of takes away from it makes it more corp you know what i mean avery like it's not as it's more Leafs game than it is Blue Jays game, what, what it usually would be. You know, yeah. we used to be able to sneak down there and, like, you know, like, we used to be able to sneak down there maybe, like, maybe get cheap tickets behind the plate on during a weekday game. I think that is just never going to happen now. Yeah, because they, they, they spread them out at least, like a lot of other ones. Like, you're still not able to sneak down into that section before, right? It was still heavily guarded is the wrong term but you couldn't get down there if you didn't have seats for it so for sure. i don't think it's i don't think it's that difference it's just the people behind you could see on tv if that mattered to you to me the one part that did suck was people gone when they're winning on uh home opener day like it's the whole bush league like that's whole, bush league the whole left side was gone i don't think that's a new thing though like no people will leave anyways it's just you see you see I think you see more seats, but again, they were crammed in before, so I don't actually even know if you see more seats. It just sucks when they're empty. It uh, it'll always suck when they're empty, no matter what. Even if they don't, people don't buy them. Like it'll it'll, it'll suck. Yeah, the craziest uh, the craziest part is, and it came to light uh, on Twitter, 
is them essentially eliminating 10,000 seats, right? Like, I'm just thinking of once the playoffs come or Jays go on a little run, it is going to be fucking impossible to get tickets. Like, the tickets are going to be so expensive. Yeah. They're eliminating uh, 10,000 seats. Like, they're, there's going to be an increase in demand but less supply. Shout out business guy Johnny. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what What is that going to do to the market? It's going to make stuff more expensive. Okay. There you go. Business guy Johnny. Uh, but it's like the the midweek games when they sell 20,000. And it's like, oh, who cares if there's that many seats? You can kind of fill it up and make a better fan experience because half of the games they play are going to be midweeks and half of them are weekends. So yeah. I think they're they're saying overall, it man, I'm a bigger guy. I weigh fucking 270. Like, I'm not on a Saturday game in the sun on the first base side crammed in there. Not an enjoyable experience for me. Other people might enjoy that more than I. Yeah. I'm not going to play about it. I'm just probably not going to go sit on the first base side for that. So if you can make the seats better, update them, point them towards the field. I'm like, it's I'm fine such with crazy. It. But like, then they made the green monster in left field now. Like that it's thing right is right field too, Avery, right? It's not just left. Le- left is way more because there's the buffer in right field with the walkway, I think, before they do it. I cannot believe what I saw in left field in the first inning when they hit that double. It's like First, we can't even see the ball down the line. It's actually Fenway, and there is no foul territory now down the line. It's lines. bananas. It's absolutely bananas. And they, uh, they showed, Sorry, they showed a behind shot of George Springer bouncing up to catch a ball. Or Sorry, hit on the turf in front of him, and they always jump up because they think it might go over their heads. And he almost just like ran in to foul territory, making a routine throw back yeah. into the infielders. Like, what? How is that even going to happen? It is. Uh, I didn't even realize that, Avery. That's a good point. I uh, There's tons of changes that we're going to have to adjust to. One is Sportsnet's going to have to really figure out the camera angle down the left field baseline. Uh, Justin Turner hits a double down the line off the top of the wall, and you just have no idea where the ball went. Like, it just <laughs> went into the abyss. It was – it was uh, – I think we were saying on a live stream uh, when we were with the Marriott. Shout out to Marriott. We're going to that in a second. We we're just like, where the fuck did this ball go? Is that out? <laughs> it, it's uh, it's it's insane. But anyways, it looks cool. Um, I'm excited to go see a Friday Jock Night. Pump for Jock Night. Yeah, jock, oh, jock Night will be in the roof, and then Saturday I, I'm going with uh my girlfriend. So I'll I to see what it's like to sit in the hundred level. I'll, yes. I'll be Give able to say on Sunday night. Give it a review. Is your do you think your girlfriend is gonna get to see the gate 14 bump and see all the people coming up to you? And she's gonna be like, All right, now we fucking go. Um, well, she like went through our numbers and like dollar figures. I think she like realized that that it's like okay, like you kind of make some money on it. That that's good, but then hopefully she'll have to stand around, take some pictures, see some people. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, I'll pay I'll hands. pay the tax. I'll pay the tickets for her so yeah. she she can be the photo taker. Love that. But uh let's go into this week. Well, the, the week that we had um again, surreal experience getting to go to the Marriott, a hotel that I used to pass by when I was a kid going to Gate 14, uh growing up with my dad and going to Jays games, uh getting invited to go there, do a live show there with the Sportsnet grill. The hospitality was simply incredible, man. They treated us like gold. Uh free food they gave us a bucket of beer just right off the rip like you boys drinking we're like yeah i guess we'll have a couple (laughs) and uh we were just cranking beers and uh they were just they were just buzzing it was just uh it was a cool experience man it really was and shout out to the marriott for that unbelievable experience you can get if you go on the skybox or the hotel rooms there you overlook the entire stadium no free ads but there you go uh it was simply awesome and uh you love to see it and people walking past us and being like, what the fuck are these guys doing with all time? <laughs> yeah, because they're just, we were in, if you'd ever been in there, I'd never been in the Marriott or the Sportsnet Grill before. Like, Me walked neither. by it a, a million times, never, oh, even, been, yeah, yeah. never even thought to walk into it ever. Um, so we were kind of set up right as the Sportsnet Grill is there. And sometimes there would just be people walking in the lobby during the game and Johnny is doing the Johnny thing. He's like, there was a, a swing out of the zone for one of the Jays guys. And you went, what the fuck is that? And there were just yeah. like kids walking by. So that was what I know. Thank you to the Marriott. Uh, thank you to the sports net grill. Hopefully do more things with them. Like you can watch Jays. B- I didn't realize why that's special. The Jays BP you can watch from sports net grill. Yeah. 
because he can't get into the stadium to watch James yes. BP ever. So it's yes. like, like, oh, that doesn't make much sense. But yeah, Sportsnet Grill, a great spot. I didn't realize how many people would go there after the game too. Oh, it was bananas. Yeah, nice little bananas. spot as well. Uh, another thing I want to talk about that is just kind of nostalgic. We were talking about it, you and I, yesterday. Just wherever your dad took you to park when you were a kid is where you think is the best parking spot in the yes. Rogers Center. And it's yes. and it is definitely not true. There is better parking no. spots than what your old man did. But for you and I, we both swear by where our dads used to park when we would go to the games as kids and couldn't be more wrong as to the worst places to park in the city. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my dad always used to take me right on the Blue Jays way. I'm sure many people know it's like uh, it's underground. It's right across from Gate 14 down the road from there, uh, right in front of the outdoor parking area where the 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 tent uh, tent row is or whatever with uh, the homeless people there. But uh, it, it's I, I always think like this is the best parking spot. And then now looking back on him, like this is the worst parking spot on the planet. It's just full of traffic from Blue Jays way yeah. while we're leaving. You know, it was it was bad. But uh, yeah, Avery. Before we go into the the games and stuff, we got to bring up maybe the greatest content idea we've ever had, <laughs> and I think this would be one of the funniest things we have ever did. So everyone knows the Gate Fourteen famous full uniform games we do. Ha ha ha! It's funny. It's hilarious. Sure, right? Everyone loves that. Avery came up with an idea. Why don't we pre-plan two, three weeks before we give a date to the people? And everyone, every Gate 14 listener buys tickets in the section we say, everyone shows up full uniform. It's the mix Uh, between Kikuchi Corner and full uniform game (laughs) with the people. I think it would be, it would be so fun. Like we got the Kikuchi Corner on TV last time. If there's a whole section full of people wearing baseball uniforms, I think it would be so fun. So. They have no other option but to show us and pump <laughs> Gate 14's tires if we do that. And if you want to be a part of history, you could you could join. Uh, I think the turnout would be insane. The turnout for Kikuchi Corner was insane, and we weren't even half as big as we are now. We did Kikuchi Corner. I can't even imagine what the turnout would be uh, for full uniform games. So let us know. Tweet at us uh, if you are down for the full uniform game with the boys. Uh, I think it's just the funniest thing of all time. And I... I uh, I just thinking of the image of a weekday game stadiums, not as packed as usual. And the, the cameras panning to a section full of idiots dressed up in full baseball uniforms would be the funniest thing ever. Yeah. I, as soon as I said the idea out loud and you didn't give me like, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. I was like, okay, we got, we got something good here. So we'll figure it out there. We'll find, we'll find a good one. It won't be too, too soon, but we'll do it before summer probably. Yeah. I think, uh, and also it'll give like the sports net cause it'll give sports net people and Rogers and like the blue Jays, like, Oh my God, these guys have a pull on the generation, <laughs> you know? Cause that's what they need. They need younger guys. It's not, yeah. it's not a joke. The baseball is more of an older crowd. And I think that's what we're doing good of. We're doing a good job of is bringing the uh, younger crowd attracted to baseball. And, uh, it's been incredible. So I think that would be the funniest thing you ever did. We have tons of stuff here, obviously. And just us two idiots leading the way in full uniform is just such a funny visual for me in that <laughs> vlog. We owe the people a full uniform vlog. Let's make that very clear. The one we, last year had terrible sound. We yeah. had to delete it. We we fucked up. Sorry. We I, we do this as a team. You and I weren't manning the camera, but we do this as a team. We take yeah. accountability for it. Yeah. We fucked up the video. Okay. So we will yeah. do a full uniform game again. I think it'd be awesome. We get a ton of people out there. Um, yeah. So. No more talking about that. Everyone knows. Full uniform game, X, Kikuchi Corner might be the thing that we have. Oh, it's like, listen, and maybe next week we'll come up with an announcement, like on a date that we could do it there that gives you guys enough time to schedule it, plan it. Everyone's out of school, you know, maybe like June, maybe May. We'll do it all my fuck it the week, week after my birthday. Fuck it. Let's go full yeah. blown here. Uh, we need to get all Tom Curtis involved as well, too. I need them in full uniforms, uh, just to make that clear. But, uh, Shout out to the Marriott for that. Obviously, before we, while we're... I need to talk you into this. We we met a lot of people. We saw a lot of people this week, and the funniest one was when we got into the Marriott. Don't you think? And we sat down there, and a certain player's family. Okay, yeah, I guess we could talk about that. So we were at the Marriott, and they are doing some sort of deal, uh, with 
Dalton Varsho's family, like they have like a Dalton Varsho exclusive meal on the menu at the Sportsnet Grill. So um, they're very close with Varsho's family. And uh, me and Avery were setting up and all that. And Avery's doing the the two two foot hot dog challenge, which will come out later. And she, our our the girl who who hooked up us with the Marriott. I don't want. I don't know if she wants to be name dropped, no, so we no, won't name we drop won't. her. But. She was like, uh, these are the VAR shows. And then I'm like, oh, hey, guys, how you doing? How you doing? We're, we're all we're, we're shaking hands, kissing foreheads, kissing babies. And uh, she goes, um, yeah, this is gate 14. And then you could just immediately see like their expressions, like not change, but they're like, oh, I fucking know who these guys are. <laughs> I don't. But we actually haven't been that bad with VAR shows. So I don't think if it was no. like if it was Espinal's family that was there, I'd be like, all right. I, I get why you guys hate us, but we haven't, we I don't think we've Marshall. we've never said anything about about them personally. It's, yeah. I think his family would also say that he would like to have a couple better at bats in a row. And yes, we want the best for. Let's get that clear. We want the best for everyone there. So um, nicest family though, very nice family, salt of the earth, yeah. really. And then we saw Davis's parent. Davis's dad is all over the place. He's just he's, he's doing the, he's doing the Canada tour. He is the. Those are the two nicest people on earth, too, man. Yeah, and uh, listen, I, I don't know if I, I know David Dad's and David D- Davis's dad is an avid listener of this podcast. There is a picture of him and his wife at the Hall of Fame, holding hands in the picture, and I'm like, this is love. Like, this is the cutest thing I have ever seen on the planet. It made me want to fall in love. It really did. It was like, you know what? This is what love is. Uh, so I appreciate them for doing that, David. Uh, thank you to everyone that bought the David Schneider shirts because his dad was a little bit stressing because his daughter bought like a lot of the shirts and he told the story st- that he bought them for all of the double A guys. Yeah, bought he was them with- for all the double A guys. So she was stressing out. He was stressing out about the shirts, and uh, he said to me, "Hey man, can you like put a tweet out or kind of can we get these shirts sold?" And I said, don't worry. Put the tweet out. He sold them in five minutes. That's yeah. the gate fourteen difference. <laughs> uh, and would it be possible that all you people that literally swore my dms i had to tell him like listen you're going to put a tweet out there that you should do first come first serve after the game i i don't want to be the middleman for this because if someone screws you over i don't want to be in uh i don't want to be involved i don't i don't want to be like the guy it's like ah oh, johnny you kind of owe me money now so i am happy it went smoothly and david schneider's dad and his mom fucking rock salt yeah. to the earth people really yeah they do i i have no more notes on the people we met um no, that was that was awesome as well. So we want to get into some ball talk. Yeah, it's gonna ball talk. Game one ball ro- talk. Game one rocked. Jose Barrios. Oh my god. He, Jose Barrios is what did he say? Bad he's a bad dog. Was that the quote? Yes. That quote fucking rocks, man. Have a when I asked for people to bring juice, I wasn't expecting the starting pitcher the next day to fucking bring juice but god damn did he ever man i mean he is i am slowly starting to think like I, we're gambling guys it's it might be a worth a sprinkle to take a flyer on a cy young for jose barrios his stuff is that good avery i'm not being delusional i'm really not being a delusional blue jays fan when you have people from other fan bases reaching out to you being like should i take a flyer on jose barrios cy young like then it's slowly starting to believe it he is unbelievable. Every single time this team has needed a massive win or a massive bounce back start or a zero to put themselves in a good sh- in a good spot to win a baseball game, Jose Barrios has done that every single time. And that start, they needed that home opener bad. Like I'm not must win game early in the season, but they needed that Monday win so bad. And seeing Jose Brios put his fucking balls on the table and just shove against the Seattle Mariners on opening day in front of a sold out stadium, icing on the cake for me. That's what you need out of that guy. Six and two thirds, no runs, six punchies too. And he outdueled Luis Castillo, who's now struggling to start this year, zero and three, and Brios is two and zero. The offense wasn't fantastic. Like it was a oh. Kirk, it was a Kirk single, it was a Davis bloop to score, and then Vladdy double. Uh, Bo hit the second hardest ball of his career, third hardest ball. Uh, sorry, of the last two seasons off the wall that almost goes out. Um, so the way that, and then IKF singled as well to score the run. So there's still the offense isn't completely there. Obviously, one run today, 
but we're showing signs of Bo getting going, and we are certainly seeing some signs of Vladdy getting going despite yesterday's O for performance. But um, the guys who need to get going are starting to kind of figure it out here at the top, I think. Yeah, and the David Schneider one uh, was uh, – that's just what a, a guy that battles at the plate does. It was a really good pitch, and he sticks his bad head out, protecting with two strikes, does a little squibbler to score the run, get the ball in play. Don't strike out there. That's what they – that is literally the only thing you are not supposed to do with those runners in scoring position like that is strike out and just kill a rally. He gets the ball in play, makes contact, and scores the runs that I essentially add to the insurance of it. And uh, that, that, that's what he does. And I'm so fired up to see the David Schneider uh, clutch. And the fans love him here. He's a, he's a very relatable guy. But that game was what this team needed, especially on opening day, because fans were booing John Schneider. They were booing Guillermo. They yeah. were booing everyone. Uh, where are you at, Avery, with the booing? Because I kind of have a take on it. it. So I think it's out of place, and I think it was at like some of the wrong people, but at least it shows that you kind of know what's going on. Like, yes. okay, you boo the hitting coach. You might not be the total reason for it. Uh, so I... like. No one got booed off the field. I think it's kind of funny when they boo Guillermo. Cheer I kind of love it. Cheer Dom Adingly. I have no problems. With, like, I don't think it's being that disrespectful, I hope. Um, so I think it's kind of funny the first time. They're not going to boo Guillermo at any point. He's never going to come onto the field. So that's how they. That's how the fans voice their displeasure for everything that's happened. And it was by one simple boo. Nothing got out of control. Yeah, kind of okay, kind of okay with that. Even though if I, I don't think it's the right person to boo completely. Yeah, I, I, I am under the impression that I kind of like it. It means if your fan base is dialed in, you had uh, the Phillies fans booing Trey Turner, they all that type of stuff. It means they care. I, I would hate to have a fan base that is kind of just happy go lucky all times, or um, has just shown no feel at certain aspects. I like the passion. I really do. Because once you get no passion, you get what kind of Toronto Maple Leafs games are. No offense. Where it's just kind of a ghost town, essentially. Yeah. A library. There's still right? real. There's a ton of real Leafs fans, but they just can't afford to go to the games. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And that's what we kind of have here with the Toronto Blue Jays. Tickets are way more affordable. You got more fans going to the games, and it, it clearly showed. <laughs> Bowie Guillermo is so fucking funny because I don't even know what that guy does. Yeah, like, I have no fucking idea. That's like booing the fucking training staff. Well, everyone, everyone just found out who Guillermo was because he was seemed to be the head guy last year, even if he wasn't. Yeah, like Hudgens was the strategist. Hudgens would have got booed too if he was there. Um, I would have booed the fuck out of Hudgens. Can we, can we talk to, just how how much you hate or how much I hate, at least, when they say the start time 7.07 and the game starts at 7.30. I think because there's open, no opening day in Tampa, it started on time. That's a good point. But they also don't have fans. <laughs> like, uh, listen, they were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Toronto Maple Leafs regular season. Like, the, the Leafs were playing the Penguins that exact same day. Downtown was an idiot zone, yeah. right? Like, if you start the game exactly at 707 and you do the pregame ceremonies before that, you kind of look not like bums on camera, but it's just like, why is people are watching the game on TV like, oh my God, no one's fucking here. Yeah. I know. I, un I know why they do it. I have to old man yell at a cloud for that one. And it infuriates me. I felt like Garrett Cole out there, the game not starting on time and it i did do, it was i'll do it every single time it was way later than i expected it yeah, to start kirk was already in the bullpen at when they were doing intros how yes. the construction workers on the field oh my so god we gotta talk about that <laughs> that was one of the funniest visuals of all time when you have the, the troops, troops and construction and workers construction workers on the field <laughs> holding, holding the, the flag of our nation it was uh, it was an all-time visual, and I don't care if you find it uh, funny or not. No matter how you look at that situation, you describe that to a normal human being that they had the construction workers who were paid to be there, by the way. Were they, they were not volunteer. No, paid to renovate the stadium. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. Their job. Yeah, so, yeah like, of course. They were treating them like these guys all 
they all just they donated their time to fix this stadium. Let's get them on the field. Like they're they're volunteers. They maybe were, if they you know, did it, maybe if they did it in record time for a stadium, it's like, oh yeah, yeah these guys work their tails off. That's why they'd be here. I'm not saying they didn't work. Their tails I thought off. it was funny that they were on the infield and the troops were on the outfield to start, <laughs> but the troops had the flag. Um, every every part of that was so funny. I thought the pregame intros were good as well. Yeah, besides they had the guys, um, <laughs> they had them lined up. They crammed them in so hard that they had to go beside like the flares to go. I thought it was a cool setup as well. Um, yeah, it was it was cool. It was cool. I liked it. I, I did like it. Uh, it just obviously took so fucking long. It was insane. I was like, can we get this game started, please? Yeah, uh, it was bananas. But other than that, though, great opening day. The Toronto Blue Jays might be the greatest or greatest home opener team on the planet. They jet there. I mean, they kind of are right now. They're the most wins in a row, right? Uh, oh. Opening day in general, not okay. Not home opener. Okay. Not home opener. But Cal Raleigh hits a home run in that game. Uh Cal Raleigh hits a huge home run again today. Um, I am done with Cal Raleigh, man. Oh my god, do I hate that fucker. I really do. God damn it, do I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> just because he really killed just because he ki- he's he's Ryan Mountcastle of the West. He, he does is. the same thing. They just kill us all the time. It's so it is so frustrating, but he came out with a quote that I thought was really interesting today. Yes. I, we had never heard anyone say anything about John Schneider, right? But even the guy, even the guys we talked to, he's we never bring him up. Like I never, even, I don't, I'm not going to talk about the guy. That's like someone asking us about our boss, Sandy, who I love, but I'm just saying it's like hundred percent. Like it's never even brought up in a situation that they would say, right? Yes. Um, yeah. We talked to Bassett for a hundred hours this off season. Never talked about Schneider. Yeah, never Not once. He, never even yeah. once came up. Yeah. So Cal Raleigh, because he, Cal Raleigh doesn't like John Schneider because of the quote where he said, "If you can execute him on him, he's not that hard to pitch to." He doesn't have the best major league numbers ever. He hits a he hit a lot of home runs last season. Yeah, good player. That's like on every hitter though at the major league level. If you're a good arm, you can execute your pitches and your game plan. Usually, you have a good chance of getting people out. Um, Tim Meza is on the anti-getting people out train right now, and I have a couple stats about Tim later, but he goes, um, Cal Raleigh asked if he heard the comments by John Schneider last year. Raleigh said, I know a lot of guys have beef with him in the league, so his comments aren't surprising. I don't have much to say. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. Wah, if you don't want wah. it to come back on you. Wah. Like, dude, you, you own us. Who cares? Yeah. Like, and by the way, who talks about other managers around the league to other players? Like, what the fuck? And the only thing I can ever think of John Schneider doing bad is the Yankees thing. The fat boy. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think he's had that many run-ins, maybe, uh, when he was in the minors coming out. John up. Schneider well, does give I'm a dick vibes, though. You think so? He, yeah, he really does. He I really thought does. the way we saw him interact when we were on the field for BP at uh, Incensi, I think the exact opposite. Really? Yeah, thought the exact opposite. No, I think he, uh, you know, those guys that are overly nice to over like to to mask who they actually <laughs> are. That's the type. You know what I'm saying? That's what he yeah. kind of gives me. I didn't. I had a totally different read on that. Okay. I yeah, no, he... I'm I'm on a different boat than you then. Okay. But like he doesn't really freak out in the dugout ever. I can't I don't see him being that mean of a person. He just seems no. condescending, maybe. Okay. He gives me that vibe where he's like a little condescending to people. We have no clue. We have no yeah. clue. We're saying yeah. that. This yeah. We're we are speculating yeah. uh, to this point. But then Cal Raleigh kills us again today in the ninth inning. Do you want to shout out Chris Bassett, man? People don't want to work nowadays. People get yep. lazy. The war against work. The war against work. Chris Bassett is on the front lines on the fight against the war on work. He texted us he wanted the eighth. He did he, text he us. He texted us he wanted. He's a crazy person, though. He is. He he's is fun. Because, Avery, you and I have seen that look from Chris Bassett before. I guess not seen it, but we know this guy. We have played Fortnite with Chris Bassett till 3 a.m., and this fucking guy has co- continuously will say, we're not getting off yeah, until we I, win. I said one bad thing. I said, we're not getting off till we lose. And it was probably a Tuesday night and we played till four in the morning. And I was like, 
we got like i gotta get off like i have to work tomorrow and he was so angry that you had to work yeah yeah i stayed with him that night we have seen the competitor chris bassett on goddamn Fortnite. i could not imagine the shit that he says to john schneider when john schneider says you're you're out of this game like you're done <laughs> He's probably like, yeah, his job. What, the fu- what what did you just say to me? Because everything he did last game, oh, we also saw his brother. We spent some time Legend. with his brother. Moose, that shout guy. out Moose, one of the greatest to ever do it. Yes, he he rocks as well. So in the first inning, he does the thing where he they pan to him on the bench and he pinches the top of his his forearm. Yes, they they show this on TV, and if you had forearm pain, you know how good that feels. It's a nice little release. Um, and then the second or third inning, you see him and Pete Walker and the trainer talking. It's like, oh, fuck, here we go. And then he just decides that, okay, time to hard hat on, lunch pail, work boots. Let's get this thing going. And he he shoved. Sucks that there was an earned run on the on the final line, but he he did an awesome job, man. That was that was vintage Bassett that we needed to see. I he genuinely, like you said, Avery, he went from, oh my God, is Chris Bassett hurt? He's going in the tunnel to, oh, he's at 115 pitches. Here, I'm going to go fire off a tweet that his day is done and then get absolutely bodied by the internet like, oh, he's not done, Johnny. How the (laughs) hell was I supposed to know he's going to go back out there for 120 pitches in fucking April? Yeah. How did I know that? That was (laughs) that was crazy. I would I would have put my whole life savings (laughs) that he wasn't going back out um, because he faced a. He went righty, lefty, lefty in the inning where we thought he was done. And he got the righty out on one pitch. Yes. So then it was, okay, is he going to stay in this game or is he coming out now? He's like, he got one pitch. He warmed up already. He might as well give him another one. He got the next out. And then the third guy he gave up the tank to. And then they get, let him get two more, right? Yeah, I was saying this to you. How mad do you think he was uh, that he gave up that bomb? Like, because uh, he could have went seven shutties. Crowd's giving him a standing ovation. This dude didn't even acknowledge the crowd. <laughs> he was probably <laughs> in his mind. He's like, that motherfucker can't yeah, You, you it. saw they, they, well, they didn't pan to him. They they showed the shot of Schneider getting him. He said, fuck me as soon as he comes off. The yeah. Mat. And that's yeah, just he, any, like any competitor who wants to be out there. That's a it's guy a, you just want. That's a guy you want to go to war with. Yeah, you like, know, legit. he was mad until the end of the game. And it's like, okay, well, we I, won. We won. It's over. Yeah. Like, don't worry about it. And that's then, exactly what that is. He yeah. is a literal crazy person. I could not imagine uh, being in the dugout with that guy during like a playoff game. Yeah. Uh, he probably just mother one bad inning, like not even a really bad inning. Like he gives up a run in three innings. He probably just wants to murder someone. He's a he, crazy. They person. showed him today when Ernie popped out to Polanco in the ninth. He smashed the the padding and the dugout in front of him. And yeah, he just like, wants to win. He wants to win, man. Uh, and the, ev- a lot of the, like. Pretty much all those guys just want to win. But as he, well. but he show like he's more of an emotional guy. Like he, yeah. like he wears it on his face. He does. He looks visually angry every fucking time. He, he looks gets, like when he's <laughs> so mad. He's he's out on the field. It he, looks like. when he is pitching, he looks like that kid whose mom dragged him to the grocery store, so he had to go away from his video games because they had to get groceries. <laughs> He's like, he's that guy on the mound where it's like, fuck, like, are we done, mom? Yeah. He looks like that guy whose girlfriend dragged him to Sephora on an NFL Sunday. Yeah, or, he, or yeah, or like a Ritzia. You're sitting on the boyfriend couch. Yeah, you're sitting on the cuck boyfriend couch uh, <laughs> when your girlfriend is shopping at Sephora or Aritzia. Two of the worst and, places on earth, by the way. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it. I, maybe because I'm a, I'm a lover. I'm a lover. I like taking <laughs> the wife there. Uh, I'm just Chris Bassett, just like. He cares so much, but his facial expression, his resting facial expression, it looks like he is so mad at all times. It's electric. Yeah. yeah. And then we had Bo go way gone yesterday. Oh, my God. And we – can I talk we, – we'll talk Bo. I did a the video of the Springer Var show at bat against George Kirby in the third inning where Var show gets a hit on a splitter that's at his shoe tops. That's just what he's <laughs> – like, that's his heat zone somehow is at his shoes. So he gets on, and we finally get to see what he is good at, and that's getting a pitcher off rhythm. So he he bluffs to set, like he's going to steal second or attempts to steal second four of eight pitches to the, when George Springer's at the plate. George Kirby forgets the three disengagements, and he Varsho's on second base. 
Springer then fouls off seven straight pitches and then a l- looping liner over the shortstop to score a run. Like that's when the big guys aren't hitting home runs. That's the type of offense we need to see from the guys at the bottom. And we just haven't been seeing that. At yeah, all. we haven't. And uh, it was that at bat. If I'm a pitcher for that at bat, I am so angry. At, like this dude is fouling off everything. And by the way, Kirby wasn't really adjusting. He was just throwing fastballs like because he had because he had Varsho on first. He was trying to give him a chance, I think. Yeah. He yeah. Earned, like he earned those fastballs. But that's a veteran at bat from Springsy. It really was. Uh, it was. That's what big dogs do, Avery. Like how that's does, what you How does Bo Bichette hit home runs? How does Bo Bichette hit? As a guy that was a hitter, and obviously not even on the same stratosphere, <laughs> no. maybe even in, on the, not even the same sport as Bo yeah, Bichette. you know, you were playing, you were playing different. I was also yeah. playing a different sport. Yeah, that ball that he hit out, like the 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 side view video, he doesn't even load. <laughs> he doesn't even use his lower half. He just throws the bat head out, and it goes into the second deck. It was one of the most absurd things I've ever seen. It was like, how does this human being do this? It's the like, swing. why does he just win like this all the time? But it's like, <laughs> I guess you can't get away with it like on a pitch like that. But I think I think Bo had been hurt like more than he let on with the neck. He told he told reporters for two days he couldn't even look at the pitcher. Yeah. And the next day he's miraculously fine. He had some at bats where we hadn't seen Bo look that bad at the plate for a while. And it yeah. was in the first inning of two straight games where he had a 93 mile an hour fastball blown by him. And then we have Bo this series when he does the flick at the top of the zone on 96 plus where he's just like, I'm not hitting this shit. It's probably a ball, but I'm going to flick it foul anyways, because my hands are that quick. That's when, you know, Bo Bichette's on and he's yeah. just like that. Got a couple of hits the other way. Um, he's, he's starting to figure things out a little bit. Yeah, and that's like, it's a good point. You could tell when Bo Bichette is locked in when he spits on that high fastball and just flicks into the other team's dugout. Yeah. Like, that's when he's locked in. And that wasn't really happening for that Rays-Astro series, right? Like, he, you could tell there was something wrong with him. And when he is locked in, he does that no-leg kick, bomb hit the, the second deck. And it was cool to see. It's just Avery, man. It was... I just wanted a sweep so bad, bro. Yeah, like, today's... Today, today sucked. sucked. Today did. It was suck. right there. It was right there. It when you face right when you face those three Mariners pitchers, Gilbert was the only one who was really on. Yes. Uh, Kirby. I don't know what's happened to Kirby. He looks bad. Can't strike people out. Yeah, and he looks given, bad. He can't. Up. He doesn't have that put away pitch. It seems. No, not right now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you've clear eye view of this. If I tell told you in December that you get Castillo, Kirby, Gilbert, you win two out of three. It's like, oh, we played the best series of the year. So that's how I want to look at things more this season. Uh, big picture. If you heard this before, how would you feel? Again, you get into the games. You see if they pitch poorly, changes your mind. Yeah. Um, but you took two of three from what you would think is one of the best one, two, threes in baseball, like up there and. Should have been. Top and five. I mean, the stats aren't there, and it's still fairly decently early in the year. No, it's um, it's crazy early in the year, John. Early, yeah. So <laughs> it's just seeing Luis Castillo get hit around like that a little bit, like that, that was weird, especially yeah. what we saw in the wild card game uh, two years ago, uh, the pump the tires one or whatever, the Aaron retires one. Um, it was weird to see Luis Castillo kind of get hit around like that, but I'm there, happy it happened. A, there was a couple. The Vladdy home run today was so vintage, like losing the ball. It's so far in the second deck. That swing was awesome. That's why we get mad, Avery. That's why we get mad when he puts up one war and 28 home or 25 home runs because we saw him do that. What he did today, two to three times a week, he would just shit on a ball like that. Yeah. And that's what we haven't seen in a while. Like it's there. Like, and he's starting to slowly show. Uh, like glimpses of his old self, like for for example, that foul ball or not the oppo ball he hit today, one hundred eight off the bat, a six forty expected batting average, right off, almost off the wall. It was caught. The double he hit on Monday, he's shown glimpses of his old self, and that home run today was vintage Vladdy, hanging breaking ball. Vladdy spits on it, 
lot like that ball was one of the furthest balls I've ever seen hit in a long time, <laughs> right? Like that was insane. Four fifty nine was it or four fifty seven? Yeah. He hasn't hit many balls further than that in years. Yes. I think first month of twenty twenty two was the last time he did that. Yeah. I was I was looking up at some of the baseballs. He hit four further ones in twenty twenty one and then two further ones before that. But that was one of the furthest ones he's hit in a long time. Justin Turner yeah. fucking rocks. Oh my god. He's That's old the- he's older than the dirt in the Rogers Center, but boy, is that guy fucking awesome. Snaps and claps for Turnsy. This yeah. guy rakes. And it seems as if like the velo thing is not that hard. I was told he couldn't hit righties. He struggled against righties, putting up over like a 115 weighted runs created plus against righties. Of course, his weight runs cradle plus against lefties like 552. He's only faced like three lefties. But yeah. Justin Turner, what an addition this guy has been for this team. It seems as if every time he is up, he gives you the Bo Bichette vibe where it's like he's not going to get out. Or if he does get himself out, it's going to be a battle of an at-bat or he's going to put on a good swing on a ball and hit a ball hard somewhere. And that is what this team needed if you look at last year. And that is why Justin Turner should consistently every single day, no matter who's on the mound, be pinning in that three hole for this club. He is so good. Spark yeah. plug. I think they don't they don't play him sometimes based on to get him rest to keep him healthy. Yeah. Still a DH and it's still a long season. But they've talked about him being in the hitting meetings, like talking a decent amount in those hitting meetings. He I think they wanted Belt to be what Justin Turner was last year. It just wasn't even close to being in his personality. There was no, I don't think there's probably a lot of teaching from belt going on, uh, but Justin Turner's seemed to do an awesome job. IKF had a pulse this week. That was really good. Um, they were the tag at third base in the first game of the series sucked. They didn't get it down and then made up for it. What do you have? Give him his flowers. Three Give hit IKF night. His flowers. Yeah. yeah. Great homestead. I want IKF to be fun. I want everyone to be good and like, yeah. let's have fun. Like Isaiah kind of Fox is an awesome nickname for IKF. Yeah. Uh, give so, him his flowers. Give him his flowers. Great he, defender. He's the, the metrics are looking good for him as a defender as well. What um, about his, his hitting? I mean, a couple blue pits, but yeah. Uh, that swinging bunt he had to cap off the <laughs> three for five or three for four game yesterday was cinema. Yeah. But uh, yeah, IKF is just the. Uh, it's just a guy you, you got to root for because Yankee fans hated him so much. And you want him to be good here, right? Yes. Like, yeah. I'm all in. I'm all in on IKF. Fuck it. I know last week I was complaining about $15 million, but he's here for two years. You might as well hop on the bandwagon. You might yeah. as well. Kevin Biggio, again, really, like, really good. So well. good. So good. Made I, some I wanna... awesome defensive stops at second base as well. He, he did it. When did he turn into like the greatest defender ever? He's insane. At <laughs> I bet the basic. metrics wouldn't say he's the the best defender ever. Yeah. So who cares? The eye test. Kevin Biggio was the best defender ever this weekend. Yeah. Um. Okay. I did a little a little Mesa thing. Again today today sucked for Mesa, but it's strictly there's something going on with him. Because it's think so? a, it's a velo thing. He's averaging ninety one point six miles an hour on his sinker right now. He's also really? throwing the high. He's throwing the highest percentage of sliders we've seen from him since twenty seventeen. Wow! So he just doesn't have his velo, and he's like, okay, I got to find a different way to pitch. His sinker has never averaged under ninety three point four miles an hour, and he's at ninety one point six. That it's a whole. You're playing a different sport at two miles an hour, like down in velo. They they were talking at some Sportsnet podcasts that won't be named uh, with some beat writers that they hit him in spring training a little bit. They did some like backfield work to get him up. And the way they handled him, they both of those guys on that podcast was like, oh, this is kind of interesting as yeah. to how they've dealt with Tim Mesa. So, yeah, I think there's. I think there's something going on with Tim there. It's it's hard to pitch in the big leagues at 91-6 um, when you were you when you were ninety, especially as a reliever. Yeah, it it really is, and that and that showed early. It sucked today, man. I mean, you you could you could blame Mesa for sure. Uh, that pitch to Cal Raleigh, first pitch, kind of just get me over pitch, just try to get ahead in the count, and he just shot on it, obviously shot on it. But other than that, though, it's like, uh. 
that bats were bad. I, we got to have the Kirk discussion, man. I, he is already has four grounded into double plays, Avery. He has six hits and four grounded into double plays. This guy has to figure out his swing or figure out his approach because that is unsustainable. It is insane that yeah. that four in, in a week, in two weeks, I guess, technically, four ground and double plays, that, that just can't happen. It can't, especially when you have a guy who gets on base so much ahead of you like Kevin Biggio. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a serving game today, maybe try and figure things out, but he had a couple hit game before Kirk he's the top at catcher framing runs to start the season again behind the plate that doesn't matter to people who see him consistently ground it's great soft, that's great soft great contact, defender. Yeah. there's two great totally defender. different things he's yeah. really good behind the dish and he struggled for now a long time at the plate don't, don't know what the fix is anymore for him I if I had the fix, I'd be working for the Blue Jays. I wouldn't be here talking about it's it. It's just, it's really bad at bad. It sucks. It's, it sucks to see Jano. I saw him, Jano with a blue pit uh, in his Buffalo thing. He's no, like, no. Grand slam. He just hit a grand slam. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I saw his first at bat. I didn't know what he, you have to tweet that. Did you? I, I, I literally just saw it in the middle of the show. I didn't want to tweet it, but oh, uh, tweet that yeah. now. Tweet that. Get yeah. that going out. So, Jano sounds like it was pretty... 40 minutes. It was 50 minutes ago. Should I still tweet it? Yeah. Who cares? People are going to like it. Get the impressions. We can make a dollar off of it. That would be nice. Uh, so Jano's close. <laughs> what are they going to do with Alec Manoa? He is starting on Saturday. The other two people, Swanee and Romano are pitching. Swanee and Romano will, I, I, in my mind, I'm just, let, let's give me Johnny Schwartz here. I'm almost positive. They'll hundred percent be back. Be back for Friday. I thought they were going to pitch Friday. No, Thursday. Okay. Okay. I think they go Thursday, get get the call up before the Rocky series. This bullpen's kind of taxed right now. Um, Not really, I guess. I guess it'll be a little decent amount of rest because that off day in between. But maybe, uh, maybe a, Saturday they'll be back. Then. Maybe Saturday they'll be back. But 100% they'll be back this weekend. That's like no questions asked. If everything goes right. They'll be back this weekend. It's going to be cool to have an actual closer again because we don't know who's closing games for us when we get to the late well, games. Yeah, the Chad Green experience has been... A roller coaster. Roller coaster that has worked out for the most part. Yes. Um, Jimmy threw the hardest pitch he's ever thrown in the pitch tracking era today. In his life. <laughs> Probably he, in his life. Jimmy Garcia's two innings today were insane how good he was. That was, that was awesome to see. Again, it sucks you couldn't get the win for the guy. Like well, him and him well, and you. We didn't even talk it. how good Kikuchi was today. I, I, it's honestly, but we're we sound like a broken record. It's every start this guy's had in the last year and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah he he's is, just good. He's we're, good. We're forgetting this was a guy who openly said, "I will go to AAA to work on my stuff because I don't want to affect this team anymore." Now he is one of the best left-handed pitchers in the fucking game. Like you say, Kikuchi today. Punching tickets, locating the off speed. The off speed today was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Fastball, getting ahead of hitters. That's what makes Yusei Kikuchi great. And today he was everything and everything and more. I love Yusei, man. He is God, he's just such a good story for this team, man. He really is. And everyone loves him. Yep. I couldn't couldn't agree more. We want to preview Rocky yeah, series. We'll pre we can preview the Rocky series. Uh we're we're, we're facing a buzzsaw of a club. Uh, did they win today no they lost uh <laughs> really yeah no way yes god yes. well i know they there's a good chance that they were gonna lose but so it is uh feltner versus gossman hudson versus bowden francis on saturday bowden and on sunday total haircut which was crazy yeah and sunday we have uh who's after bowden jose yeah. jose jose and and they just don't know who's going for the Rockies who's yet. Going for the Rockies yet, no. It's whoever's uh, before, whoever's before, um, Quantrill in the rotation, probably right. Yeah, I'm not. I like I said, I'm I'm not, I'm not a Rockies guy. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> no. I think this is a series you gotta sweep. Like the Rockies, and we've been watching them a lot because our, our boss Sandy has their Tim their team total win total or their win total for the entire season. This is one of the worst teams we've ever seen. Yeah. Like, Chris Bryant has turned into a pumpkin. He sucks. Like, he's terrible. Uh, 
Nolan Jones is hitting below 170. Yep. Just their entire team is just bad. Like they don't. Really... Ezekiel Tovar is fun. He's going to be a, a great yes. Rocky shortstop again, I think. Yes. Yes. But other than that, there's not really many promising stuff. And again, me saying sweep, like that's crazy. Let's just go win a series. But you got Gossman and Barrios going this fucking series. Like the yeah. ball no, when, is when in you look court. when you look back at this series, it's how did you do against the shittier teams in baseball? Yeah. And if you say you don't have a X above 500 record, you'll be like, okay, missed opportunities, big opportunities, sweep, like must sweep. I think um, doesn't matter the time of the year. This happens at it's a must sweep happy with two and one unacceptable one and two. Yes. I'm in the same boat as you there. I am. Uh, you can't lose this series. You lose this series. If to me, I am miserable on Sunday night when I'm talking to you guys. If the Toronto Blue Jays lose this series, this team stinks. This team stinks out loud, the Rockies. Like, very, very bad baseball club. Not really anything that pops up to me uh, with this team, but it's going to be fun. Do you think the Dome gets open this week? It's been great outside. Uh, I thought the weather was shitty this weekend. Oh, it was? Yeah, that's what we were talking about at work. Uh, 14, 11, 15. Windy most of those days. Okay. So maybe the Yankees maybe series su- maybe Sunday, but I kind I kind of doubt it. Maybe the Yankees series they open yeah. up. Yeah, nineteen, eighteen, twenty for the Yankees series. Yeah, that makes more sense then, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe the Yankees series they open it up, but it should be a fun series, and and I'm I'm expecting a lot of uh a lot of runs. I really am. I I want this team to step on this team's fucking throat. I really do. Agreed. I agree. Like I. You got a soft spot on the schedule here with the Rockies, because then you got to go back against the Yankees at home the day after the series. So it's going to be tough. So you got to get these wins out of the way, especially when you're facing a good team like the Yankees after. So um, enjoy the weekend, folks. Enjoy the Dome. Uh, Dome from home was not a success today. What? Dome from home was not a success today. No, cancel Dome from home. Home from Dome. Uh, Yeah, cancel that shit. But... Uh, thank you to everyone. You ran up the numbers, man. We were number three in Canada last week on the podcast charts in baseball, competing with shows that do a podcast every single day. I know it's going to be impossible for us to get over those guys because we record twice a week. Uh, number thir- number 14 on the podcast charts in all of Canada sports. We were ahead of like Pat McAfee show, all those type of stuff in Canada on the podcast charts. So just truly insane stuff. I can't believe this is still happening, but uh, we love you guys, man. Do not take Do not take this for granted that we got ball at the Rogers Center. I would have killed for Rockies Blue Jays in November. Go to the games. Enjoy yourselves. If you you see us there, say hi. We'll take a picture. We got got no no issues doing that. So it's all we we appreciate you guys a lot. And we'll we'll give back with what we can. Yeah. So we love you guys. Um, and obviously tons of stuff coming out here uh with gate 14, tons of content ideas we have. So stay tuned for that. And uh, let's have ourselves a weekend, man. Live stream on Sunday, jock night Friday. I am pumped for this weekend and uh, make the most of it. Gate 14 forever. Let's go win a series. Hopefully next time we're talking to you guys, this team is a one game above 500 or, or uh, sorry, two games above 500 or one game above 500 or 500. Sorry. Love you guys. (laughs)